House Blackfire can be counted as one of the most interesting and unique houses to call the Crown Lands home. Not just because of how they were formed and their close ties to House Targaryen, but the wider impact they would have on the history of Westeros, from the sands of dawn to the icy winds of the wall. The house was founded in 184 AC and was a cadet branch of House Targaryen, founded by Daemon I Blackfire, the bastard son of King Aegon IV Targaryen, known as Aegon the Unworthy, and his cousin, Princess Dana. But more importantly, despite both his parents being members of House Targaryen, Daemon was a bastard, the first of the many bastard children of King Aegon IV, known as the Great Bastards. When King Aegon IV died in the year 184 AC, his last will and testament decree that all his bastard children be legitimized, and thus Daemon Waters formed this new cadet branch of House Targaryen and took the name Blackfire after the ancestral Valyrian steel blade of House Targaryen, the Sword of Kings, Blackfire. Their sigil was the reverse of House Targaryen's three-headed red dragon on black, with Daemon adopting a black three-headed dragon breathing black fire on red. Their motto is unknown, or at least not officially recorded in the history books, but some have speculated it too could have been the reverse of House Targaryen's motto, fire and blood, blood and fire. Being a cadet branch from two members of House Targaryen, members of House Blackfire possess traditional Valyrian traits, such as platinum blonde hair, violet eyes, and premonition-like dragon dream abilities presented by some members of House Targaryen over the centuries. Daemon Waters, later Blackfire, was the bastard son of King Aegon IV Targaryen and his cousin, Princess Daena Targaryen, born in the year 170 AC causing much scandal during the reign of the Septon King, Baelor the Blessed. At the time of his birth, Dana refused to name the father, but it would later come to light that the then Prince Egon was indeed Daemon's father. Daemon was said to be a tall and powerful man, with broad shoulders, muscular arms, and a flat stomach. He had strong Targaryen features, with deep purple eyes and the silver gold hair which he wore long, flowing down to his shoulders in a silvery gold mane, and was described as almost inhumanly beautiful. Daemon looked every inch the warrior, and many thought he strongly resembled the portraits of Aegon the Conqueror. When Daemon won a squire's tourney at the age of 12, Aegon granted him knighthood, and surprisingly gave him Blackfire, one of the ancestral Valyrian steel swords of House Targaryen, and additionally, the Sword of Kings, wielded by every Targaryen king of Westeros since the conquest. Even at the time, this caused much division. As while Daemon was Aegon's son, he was of course a bastard, meaning Aegon's only legitimate son, Prince Daeron, was the heir apparent to the Iron Throne. Many speculated Aegon giving Daemon Blackfire was him acknowledging his bastard son as his heir over Daeron. After all, Blackfire was the Sword of Kings. This speculation would be part of the fuel for the events that followed after the formation of House Blackfire. When Aegon IV was on his deathbed, the king legitimized all of his bastard children, including Daemon. Despite warning against honoring King Aegon IV's decree, given the political ramifications of doing so, the now King Daeron II Targaryen allowed his father's will to pass, as it was, after all, the word of a king. The young Daemon married Rowan of Tyrosh when he was 14 years old and was granted a tract of land along the Blackwater Rush and the right to be able to keep there by his half-brother, King Daeron II. However, we have no record of where this land was or if work even began on House Blackfire's keep. After the marriage of King Daeron to the sister of the Prince of Dawn and likewise Princess Daenerys marrying that same Prince of Dawn in 187 AC, Dawn officially joined the realm of House Targaryen, but this in itself would fuel the coming Blackfyre Rebellion. The growing influence of the Dornish at court, the Dornish appearance of Daeron II's heir, Baelor Breakspear, the sudden change of Dornish enemies to Dornish allies despite the historical hatred between the likes of the Stormlanders and the Dornish, King Daeron's rumoured illegitimacy, a tale started by King Aegon IV during his reign, and Aegon IV's previously public gift of Blackfire, Sword of Kings, all came to one inevitable outcome. 
it caused several nobles and knights to start mistrusting Daron II and his son Baelor Breakspear. While seeing the promise in Daemon, men from across the realm began to approach Daemon, but it took them many years to convince him to declare for the Iron Throne. Maester Yandel considers it likely to have been Aegor Rivers, Daemon's younger half-brother who had managed to finally convince Daemon in the end. According to King Maekar I Targaryen, it had both been Aegor Rivers and Sir Quinton Ball had played the largest role in convincing the prince. Aegor pressed him to make his claim for the Iron Throne, and after Daemon agreed to a betrothal between his eldest daughter Kala and Aegor, his efforts increased. Many lords and knights joined in. Besides the influence of his counsellors, Daemon had come to resent having the status of a bastard and what it represented. In the year 196 AC, after years of pressure from the likes of Aegor Rivers and disgruntled lords up and down Westeros, unhappy with the rule of King Daron II, in particular those who felt the Dornish had been given too much power in the wake of them joining the Seven Kingdoms, Daemon Blackfire had made his decision. He would challenge his half-brother, the king for the Iron Throne, but Daemon, or some who supported him, must have acted too rashly, for word soon reached King Daron that Daemon Blackfire meant to declare himself king within the turn of the moon. Ultimately, we do not know how word came to Daron, though the unfinished tome, the Red Dragon and the Black, suggests that another of the great bastards, Brendan Rivers, was involved in some way. If he was in fact the source of the information, or simply told of it via a third party, we cannot say. King Daron sent the King's Guard to arrest Daemon before he could take his plans for treason any further than that plans. We do not know how, but Daemon was forewarned of his coming arrest and made plans to make his escape. However, given the now perilous position he found himself in, with his plans now known, he could not do it alone. But those loyal to Daemon were more than ready to assist their chosen king with the help of the famously hot-tempered knight and his former master-at-arms, Sir Quinton Ball. Known to the pages of history as Fireball, Daemon was able to escape the Red Keep safely by a secret means that remain unknown to us even to this day. As knowledge of Daemon's plan to overthrow the king was not yet known widely among the lords and small folk alike, gave the rebels a chance to dictate the narrative of events somewhat in their favour, or so that was the intent. Thus, Daemon Blackfire's allies used this attempted arrest as a cause for war, claiming that King Daron had acted against Daemon out of no more than baseless fear and unverified rumours from untrustworthy sources. And thus, like with many conflicts before and after, the war of words and politics had begun, with supporters on both sides trying to justify their positions to make themselves seem the wrong and attacked party, whilst trying to rally undecided allies to their cause. When you take a look back through history, wars will follow the same pattern, from Aegon's conquest to the Dance of the Dragons, and now the Blackfire Rebellion, they all followed the same pattern before the conflict inevitably turned bloody. It was now the long-standing rumours surrounding the parentage of King Daron began to resurface in earnest. The supporters of Daemon Blackfire gave the king the mocking title of Daron Falseborn, thus repeating the claims that Aegon the Unworthy himself was said to have circulated in the later years of his reign, that he had been sired not by the king, but by his brother, Aemon the Dragon Knight. Was there truth to these rumours? We can never know. There is no real proof that favours them nor proof that disproves them, but even so, those on both sides of the argument firmly became entrenched in their position, and in this manner did the first Blackfire Rebellion begin. In the year 196 AC, Daemon reversed the colours of the traditional Targaryen arms to show a black dragon on a red field. The rebels declared for Princess Daena's bastard son, Daemon Blackfire first of his name, proclaiming him the eldest true son of King Aegon IV and that his half-brother, Daron the Bastard. Subsequently, many battles were fought between the Black and the Red Dragons in the Vale, the Westerlands, the Riverlands and further afield. Before fighting began, however, clear sides in this conflict formed and grew larger by the day. It has later been said that half the realm declared for Daemon Blackfire the other half for King Daron, though the truth is this may be an exaggeration on both parts, as none of the great houses did pledge their support to House Blackfire, and even among the houses who did pledge their support, not necessarily the full houses did, and even when they did, they passively backed aside. Conversely, King Daron 
did also have the backing of many minor houses, but also several of the great houses, such as House Aaron, Tyrell, Tully and Martell. Most notably of the other houses, records show that House Hightower, Butterwell, Oakheart and Tarback gave support to both Damon and Daron, while others, such as House Manfred and Lothston, were willing to portray Damon for Daron. For Damon and House Blackfire, most of their core supporters were concentrated in the Reach and in the Stormlands, with some further afield, but those two kingdoms made up most of Damon's strength. They were primarily made up of houses among the Border Lords, with strong anti martel sentiment, who resented the new peace deal with Thorn, thus their support was going to be strongly in favour of Damon. At some point during the conflict, Damon did manage to openly control enough territory that at some point he began minting his own coinage. However, many scholars have noted such coinage in truth held little value, and at this point it was more of an act of propaganda, as for many lords and small folk, seeing the likeness of Damon Black fire on coinage gave him more of a sense of legitimacy. We also know that at some point a thief attempted to steal dragon eggs for Damon, another symbol of Targaryen legitimacy. No matter if Damon could go on to hatch the egg or not, the possession of them added to Damon's cause, but ultimately the thief was caught and the plan fell apart. The war, much like the countless before it, would be a bloody one for both sides. Over its course, battles were fought between the rebels and loyalists, amongst other places, the Vale, the Westerlands, the Riverlands, the Reach. So Quinton Ball attacked the Westerlands, killing Lord Lefford at the gates of Lannisport, and then defeating Damon Lannister in turn. At the crossing of the Manda, Sir Quinton slew all of Lady Penrose's sons, except for the youngest, who he spared as a favour to the lady. Lord Leo Tyrell participated in the first Blackfyre Rebellion as well, fighting on behalf of House Targaryen and Daron. He won notable victories in the Reach against Daemon's supporters. During a period where it seemed as if Daemon Blackfyre was prevailing, King Daron II came to consider his hand of the king, Lord Ambrose Butterwell, to be ineffectual, and in the end, Butterwell's loyalty was questioned, with him being suspected of being a secret supporter of Daemon. Shortly after Butterwell was replaced by Lord Hayford, a noted loyalist, on the eve of the Battle of the Redgrass Field, the key and final battle in the rebellion, the key Blackfire general Quinton Ball was slain in a chance encounter, picked off by a random archer when he stopped for a drink of water. Meanwhile, Lord Bracken had gone across the narrow sea to hire sailed swords to reinforce the Blackfires but storms delayed his return and the merest crossbowmen he had hired. Going into the final battle of the war, there was much at stake for both sides. Either could walk away with victory. The Battle of the Redgrass Field would change the fate of Westeros, House Blackfire, and Targaryen forever. While the first Blackfire Rebellion was of course a bloody affair, filled with battles big and small, the balance of power shifting after each. But in the end, it would all come down to a single battle, and one that would shape the future of Westeros, and define not just House Targaryen and Blackfire, but houses great and small for the next century. The first Blackfire Rebellion ended at the Red Grass Field, nigh on one year after the onset of the war. Some scholars have written of the boldness and bravery of the men who fought alongside Daemon Blackfire, while others of their treason against their true king, Daron II. But the truth of the matter is, for all the valour in the field of battle and the enmity against King Daron, their cause was lost. The two armies collided on an unnamed field. For the Black Dragons, Lord Costain was on the left of Daemon's host, while Lord Shawnee was on the right, with Aegor Rivers, who was known as Bitterstill. Lord Leo Tyrell, one of Daron's most powerful and influential supporters, did not arrive in time for this decisive battle. Historical records and tales of the many present at the battle state that Daemon was unstoppable that day, first cutting Lord Donald Aaron's vanguard to pieces, slaying Will Wainwood and the Knight of Ninestar before coming upon Sir Gawain Corbray of the Kingsguard. A famous fight took place between the two, with Valyrian steel swords, with Daemon wielding Blackfire, the Sword of Kings, and Gwain using the famous Lady Forlorn. Daemon managed to severely injure his opponent, leaving him blind and bleeding, but Daemon paused to make sure no more injury came to Sir Gwain, ordering Red Tusk to carry Gwain back to the maester in the rear. By that time, Daemon's half-brother, Brendan Rivers, known as Bloodraven, and his private guard, the Raven's Teeth, crested the Weeping Ridge, 
gaining the high ground from where he showered Damon's position with arrows. Bloodraven had spotted Damon's banner and slew the elder of Damon's twin sons, Aegon. Knowing that Damon would never leave his son on the field, he then pierced Damon with seven arrows, the last killing him. The younger twin, Aemon, picked up the Sword of Kings Blackfire when his father fell. Despite the boy's bravery trying to fight on, he too was slain by Brendan Rivers. In many battles, the death of your general, your chosen king, would cause your ranks to rout. But this was not the case with the devout supporters of Damon Blackfire. His death was followed by Aegor Rivers, Bitterstill, his half-brother, and his mad charge with the Sword of Kings Blackfire firm in hand as he attempted to rally Damon's forces. Bitterstill met with Bloodraven, his long-term rival, in the midst of the charge, and a mighty duel of legend ensued. Men who witnessed it spoke of the ferocity of the duel. It ultimately left Bloodraven blinded in one eye and sent Aegor Rivers fleeing still with Blackfire in hand. But the battle came to an end when Prince Bader Breakspear appeared with a host of Stormlanders and Dornishmen. Men from two regions of Westeros, who for the last thousand years had been on opposite sides of the battlefield, now on the same, allied with each other, they fell on the rebels from the rear, causing massive damage, while the young Prince Makar Targaryen rallied what remained of Lord Aaron's vanguard, and made an impactable anvil against which the rebels were hammered and destroyed. A Lord Shawnee died from his wounds, while Lord Ambrose Butterwell lost two sons who fought on opposite sides of the rebellion. Sir Buford Bulwer allegedly killed 40 men during the battle. Only some of the numerous tales and legends from the Battle of the Red Grass Field to mark the pages of history books and in the Songs of Singers. It is suggested that the Red Grass Field was actually quite a close affair, and if Damon had not stopped to ensure Sir Gwain was sent to a maester, he might have broken Maycar's left before Bloodraven had managed to gain the ridge, and before Baelor Breakspear arrived. Then, with Bloodraven slain and the road to King's Landing open, Daemon would have had little opposition, and we may very well now have a Blackfire King. With that, the Battle of the Redgrass Field and the First Blackfire Rebellion came to its bloody end. Depending on your point of view, and if you supported the Black Dragons or the Red, an estimated 10,000 men had died in Daemon Blackfire's attempt to overthrow his brother and claim the Iron Throne. But while 10,000 died, many more were wounded and maimed, and that does not include the countless small folk who also lost their lives, caught in the middle of the conflict. King Daron, at the start of his reign, had worked to keep the peace Baelor the Blessed had forged. It had been shattered, though arguably through no fault of his own, save perhaps too much mercy for his half-brother, with some critics of the king believing Daron could have done more sooner to prevent Daemon from rebelling as warning signs were present for many years. In the aftermath, King Daron showed a sternness that few expected, with many even close to him who felt it was beyond his personality. Many lords and knights who had supported the Black Dragons of Daemon Blackfire had lands and seats and their privileges stripped from them and were forced to give over hostages. Daron felt that he had trusted them and that that trust was now broken and could never return. He had done all he could to rule justly, and still they turned against him. Damon Blackfire's surviving sons, Damon, Hagon, and Aenys, fled Westeros to Tyrosh, their mother's homeland, and with them went Damon Blackfire's most loyal and fierce supporter, Aegor Rivers, Bitterstill, who would go on to form the famous Southall Company, the Golden Company. But Bitterstill would remain a thorn in the side of House Targaryen for years to come, as the realm would continue to be troubled by the claims of Blackfire claimants to the Iron Throne for more than four generations. When you look at the long history of men who have served as Hand of the King since the very first Oris Baratheon, Brendan Rivers, known commonly as Bloodraven, over his term as Hand, proved to be both capable and effective at the role, and despite his critics, he can be accounted as among the best to take the position. While the realm had suffered through the great spring sickness, and then the droughts caused more suffering, with it the growing murmurs among the lords of Westeros for support at the second Blackfire Rebellion. And despite Bloodraven's sour reputation among the lords and small folk alike, his network of spies and knowledge of events up and down Westeros, from the Sands of Dawn to the Wall in the North, would be a key factor in how history played out. As the truth is, the Black Dragon was lingering across the Narrow Sea, 
in the free cities, waiting for the right moment to come and take its place, and bring blood and fire to Westeros once more. It was Lord Gorman Peak at the centre of the attempt to bring about a second, new uprising in support of House Blackfire. For Gormans and House Peak's role in the first Blackfire Rebellion, House Peak had been stripped of two of their three castles the house had held for centuries, and began the swift decline of House Peak, from which they would never truly recover from. Gorman was believed to have been a close friend to Damon II Blackfire, and said to be a sour-mouthed man with a well-trimmed beard, coloured grey, black and white, an influential lord even after the loss of so much of House Peak's power. Gorman was considered a great knight, and one of the best warriors of his age, and a key supporter to Damon I Blackfire. After he bent the knee and was punished for his role in the first Blackfire Rebellion, it is said that Gorman became blind to reason in his thirst for revenge in the recovery of his seats that were stripped from House Peak. As the droughts that plagued the realm ended and the Great Spring Sickness a fading memory, Lord Gorman, who had for years been talking in secret with the Black Dragons in Essos, managed to convince Damon Blackfire's eldest surviving son, Damon the Younger, to cross the narrow sea and make a play for the Iron Throne. Feeling the damage and recovering realm made it the perfect time to strike, while there was still discontent towards Eris and Bloodraven, among the small folk and some of the lords. The man who would become Damon the Second Blackfire and be at the heart of this second Blackfire Rebellion was known as Damon the Younger and was the third son of Damon the First Blackfire. He would later go by the alias of John the Fiddler during the coming attempted uprising. Damon was described as a young, lean man with a comely, clean-shaven face and fine features. He had the traditional silver hair of old Valyria, like his father and his Targaryen ancestors, among other Valyrian features. However, Damon would dye his hair black to hide his identity, with his hair being the Targaryen silver, marking him out, drawing unwanted attention to him. Damon was born in Westeros in the year 189 AC and was the third son of Damon I Blackfire and Rowan of Tyrosh. He was named after his father and known as Damon the Younger to differentiate between the two. As a child, Damon became close friends with a boy called Alan Cockshaw. Alan was a member of House Cockshaw from the Reach and would in time become the lord and head of House Cockshaw during the reign of King Aerys I Targaryen. While history does not record Alan's exact age, we can assume he was close in age to Damon, given the deep friendship formed in their youth. He was described as having a pudgy face with dark blonde hair. There was much speculation as to the exact nature of Alan and Damon's relationship and how deep this friendship really went, with it being suggested they were in fact lovers rather than just friends, as Alan would become very jealous when Damon paid attention to other men. When murmurs of Damon returning to Westeros began, Alan was said to be ecstatic at the news. However, despite their supposed close relationship, according to Damon, Alan grew tiresome when he became drunk. It is also believed that both Damon and Alan were bullied by Damon's elder twin brothers, Egon and Aemon. In 196 AC, when Damon was seven years old, his father began the first Blackfyre Rebellion. After the death of his father and older brothers at the Battle of the Red Grass Field, Damon, with the rest of House Blackfire, went into exile in Tyrosh, with his surviving family and with his uncle, Egor Rivers, known as Bittersteel. Damon, being the blood of old Valyria, and like many of his Targaryen kin, was believed to have had prophetic dreams throughout his life, and it may have been these very same dreams that led him down the path to the second Blackfire Rebellion. It is said that Damon had correctly dreamed that his elder twin brothers, Egon and Aemon, would die at the Red Grass Field during the first Blackfire Rebellion, and later that Sir Duncan the Tall would become a knight of the Kingsguard, which as we know from later events, did too come to pass, all in which gives some validity to the claims Damon's dreams were in fact prophetic. But some still argue that these dreams could have been open to interpretation. Before the second Blackfire Rebellion, Damon supposedly dreamed that a dragon would hatch from eggs at White Walls, and thus plans were put in motion and conspiracies begun as the Black Dragon rose again. The Second Blackfire Rebellion had come. The Second Blackfire Rebellion took place in the year 212 AC, 
Damon II Blackfire had finally been convinced by Lord Gorman Peak, among other conspirators, to launch a second attempt to take the Iron Throne. While not an all-out bloody war on the scale of the first Blackfire Rebellion, the second is much more interesting from a political point of view, with much being behind closed doors, with scheming and planning, that would all come to a head at the White Walls Tawny. If events at the Tawny had occurred differently, as they very well easily could have, then there is a possibility that Damon II Blackfire could have rallied enough support to take the Iron Throne for House Blackfire. Across the narrow sea in Tyrosh, Damon II Blackfire, the eldest living son of Damon I Blackfire, is said to have dreamed that a dragon would be born at White Walls. Lord Gorman Peak, a Blackfire supporter, somehow heard of Damon's dream and convinced him to cross the narrow sea and make a play for the Iron Throne. The famous White Walls tawny was to celebrate the marriage of Lord Ambrose Butterwell to a daughter of Lord Frey. The tawny was used by some of those who had sided with House Blackfire during the first Blackfire Rebellion and those who felt resentment towards the rule of King Aerys I and his hand, Brendan Rivers, as a way to join their forces and plan in secret without suspicion. Most of the houses and lords who had fought for the Black Dragon in the original rebellion had their children taken as hostages. In many of these cases, those hostages had died during the Great Spring Sickness, which allowed for their families to plot once again. There were even some cases with the lord who had fought in the first rebellion had died in the years since, and the titles and lands had passed to a son, who perhaps did not value the lives of their kin taken as hostages, or maybe saw this as the only way to gain their freedom. However, one important aspect to consider when talking about the Second Blackfire Rebellion is that Aegor Rivers, the half-brother of Damon the First Blackfire, and one of the great bastards, who played such an important role in the First Blackfire Rebellion, did not think much of Lord Peak's plan and mistrusted Damon's supposed dreams, thus did not give him his support, nor the Sword Blackfire, the Sword of Kings, the key organisers of the tawny, namely Sir Tormard Heddle and Lord Gorman Peak, convinced Lord Butterwell to name his prized possession a dragon egg, given by King Aegon IV as a prize for the winner of the tawny. During the wedding tawny, Damon was under the guise of a hedge knight, going by the name of Sir John the Fiddler. He was given a place of honour on the dais. It's uncommon for someone of his supposed position of hedge knight, which may have risen some suspicions. After the bedding had taken place, the history books tell us that Damon, still under the guise of John, approached a fellow hedge knight, Sir Duncan the Tall, and told him about dreams he was having, involving Duncan wearing a white cloak in the future. In retrospect, yet another dream of Damon's that would in time prove to be true, as Sir Duncan would later join the Kingsguard. It is also believed that Damon tried to win Duncan over to his cause, but Duncan remained unsure. They were then interrupted by Lord Gorman Peak. Alan Cockshaw, a close friend of Damon and speculated lover who had been ecstatic up until this point of Damon's return to Westeros, deeply resented Duncan for the loss of Damon's attention became his secret enemy. Peak and Heddle attempted to rig the tawny so Damon would win by bribing his opponents, who would be competing in his disguise as John the Fiddler. However, the plot was foiled by the intervention of Sir Duncan the Tall and the prowess of Sir Gledon Flowers, who had refused the bribe of Lord Peak. The dragon egg prize for the winner of the tawny had been stolen and Sir Gledon was framed for the deed due to his refusal to lose to Damon in the list. The missing egg was found to be in his possession, and he was arrested and thrown into a cell. However, Duncan slew Tormart in single combat, and revealed the egg had been found in Glendon's saddlebags. It was in fact just painted stone. The real dragon egg was still missing. In truth, it is believed that Damon himself had been unaware of the plot and the wider plan of Lord Peak and what it entailed, which left him unsure who to believe or trust. He opted for a different course altogether and revealed his true identity as Damon the Second Blackfire and ordered a trial bar battle be given to Gledon, giving him a chance to defend himself, during which Gledon unhorsed Damon on the first pass. However, by this time, news quickly spread throughout the castle and tawny that Lord Brendan Rivers, known as Bloodraven, 
the feared Hand of the King was marching on the castle with three members of the King's Guard of Eris I, his own personal guard of 300 raven's teeth and 500 knights and 5,000 infantrymen from the Crownlands and Riverlands, with more likely to follow. These men were drawn from House Darkland, Hayford, Massey, Rosby, Stokeworth, Mooton, and House Blackwood, the house of Brendan's mother, Melissa. Damon called for those within the castle to fight to the death, but was laughed off by most of the fighting men. Seeing the gravity of the situation and the size of his uncle's host, Damon then marched out of the castle and offered single combat. Damon the second Blackfire promptly taken prisoner by Bloodraven, thus ending the second Blackfire rebellion before it truly even began, preventing bloodshed at White Walls in which many would have died and stopping the risk of a second Blackfire rebellion from turning into a long and drawn out war that would engulf the whole of Westeros from the Wall to the Sands of Dawn. In the aftermath, Lord Ambrose Butterwell kept only one tenth of his vast fortune and the castle of White Walls was forfeit to the Iron Throne for his role in the conspiracy, with it later being raised to the ground as punishment. Sir Tormund Hedel had died at the hands of Sir Duncan the Tall, and Lord Gorman Peak was executed for his part in the rebellion, alongside many others who were too executed for their parts as well. Oddly, Aegor Rivers not being part of this second Blackfire rebellion stands out as a key part of the history. Aegor, known as Bitter Still, did not take part in the rebellion, and as we know, refused to give Daemon Blackfire, the Sword of Kings, something that many historians speculated did damage Daemon's attempt to take the crown. Daemon the Second Blackfire was taken prisoner by Bloodraven and taken to King's Landing, where he would be held prisoner and hostage to prevent any attempt by Aegor Rivers to crown Daemon's younger brother Hagon, as by the Blackfire's own logic, Hagon could not be considered the rightful claimant to the throne while Daemon still lived, albeit a prisoner. But Daemon the Second Blackfire died a few years later, between the years 212 and 219 AC, while a hostage in the Red Keep. Thus, Hagon and Bitterstill were free to launch the Third Blackfire Rebellion. While the first Blackfire Rebellion failed, it did come close to succeeding if the Battle of the Red Grass Field had gone the other way in the favour of the Black Dragons. In comparison, the second Blackfire Rebellion can be considered nothing but an unmitigated disaster, with the conspirators' plans crumbling to nothing before the rebellion could even begin in earnest. Perhaps Aegor Rivers, bitter still, was right to keep away from Daemon the Second Blackfire and his attempt to take the Iron Throne. While many saw Bitter Steel refusing to give Blackfire the Sword of Kings to Daemon as a petty gesture, maybe Aegor saw what others could not, that Daemon the Second Blackfire was not the man to lead them. For a time, with Daemon in captivity in the Red Keep, many started to believe the Blackfire issue was dealt with once and for all. But Daemon's death only a few years into his captivity left an open door for his remaining Blackfire kin to relight the flame of rebellion once again. In 219 AC, Hagon Blackfire, born between the years 190 and 193 AC, the fourth son of Daemon the First Blackfire, Given Hagon was so young at his father's death at the end of the first Blackfire Rebellion meant he spent much of his life away from Westeros. We therefore know very little about his life and the kind of person he was, so it makes it hard to judge what kind of king Hagon could potentially have been. Late into the reign of King Aerys I Targaryen, it was clear to those far and wide that Aerys took very little interest in the ruling of his kingdom or in fact being king at all. Thus, maybe this was the reason Bitter still believed in 219 AC that it was the right time to launch the third Blackfire Rebellion. But unfortunately, despite the uninterested king, the task at hand was not going to be as smooth sailing as Bitter still and Hagon may have hoped during their planning, as despite the king's disinterest, he was surrounded by those made for leadership, warriors skilled at war, and a hand of the king who saw and heard all, a thousand eyes and one. Many would forgive Prince Maekar Targaryen for not swiftly jumping to his elder brother's defence after Bloodraven, Brendan Rivers, was chosen as Hand of the King over himself. But Maekar Targaryen was not that kind of man, and the reality is Maekar, despite his dispute with Ares over the handship, 
was always going to be one of the first to answer the call to his brother's defence and that of House Targaryen. Makar was first and foremost a warrior and the kind of leader that House Targaryen needed at this time. Leadership that proved to be vital in crushing Hagon and Bittersteel's plans. Makar's sons also fought in the war, playing key roles alongside their father. Most notably, it is said that Prince Arion Targaryen, known as Arion Brightflame, performed several well-known heroic acts that fueled the songs of singers and bards for decades to come. Highlighted in the histories is also the courage of Makar's youngest son, the then 19-year-old Prince Aegon, the future King Aegon V. During the final battle of the war, the legendary and lifelong feud between Brendan Rivers, Bloodraven, and Aegor Rivers, Bittersteel, added yet another chapter with a second duel between the two half-brothers, much like the one that occurred during the Battle of the Red Grass Field during the first Blackfyre Rebellion. Ultimately, Hagon the First Blackfire died in the aftermath of the battle, but not without some controversy that has stained the pages of history when all was clearly lost for the Black Dragons. Hagon surrendered and gave up his sword, but he was dishonorably and treacherously killed. As for Aegor Rivers, he too was captured alive and returned to the Red Keep in chains, and there the Blackfire issue could have perhaps ended once and for all if not for King Aerys I. Many historians since have put forward that if Bittersteel had been put to the sword as all had expected, including the man himself, and urged by the likes of Prince Arion and Bloodraven, then the puppet master who pulled the strings behind two of the three Blackfire rebellions would never be able to orchestrate a fourth attempt, effectively ending any remaining Blackfire ambitions for the time being. But that was not to be. Aegle Rivers, Bitter still, was tried and found guilty of high treason, as all had expected. But to the shock of onlookers, King Aerys I, who never enjoyed having to make decisions himself, this time decided to spare his life rather than sending for the headsman, commanding that he be sent to the wall to live out his days as a man of the Night's Watch. Like many had feared at the time, this proved to be a foolish and misguided mercy for the Blackfires still had many friends at court and up and down Westeros, some of them only too willing to play the informer, the ship carrying Bittersteel and a dozen other captives who had joined the Black Dragons, was taken in the narrow sea, on the way to Eastwatch by the sea at the wall, and Aegle Rivers was freed and returned to the Golden Company in Essos. Before the year was out, he crowned Hagon's eldest son, King Daemon III Blackfire in Tyrosh, and resumed his plotting against the king who had spared him. After the death of King Makar Targaryen in 233 AC, a great council was called by Brendan Rivers, Bloodraven, the Hand of the King, to decide the succession. Out of the shadows came a claimant who appeared in King's Landing, with no warning for most of the lords present, none other than Aenys Blackfire, the fifth son of Daemon I Blackfire's seven sons. Aenys was born sometime between the years 191 and 193 AC, making him no older than 42 years of age. It later came to light that when Bloodraven announced there was to be a great council to decide the succession, Aenys had written to him from exile in Tyrosh, putting forward his case in the hopes that his word might win him the Iron Throne that his forebearers had thrice failed to win with their swords. Some have rightly pointed out this was a naive move on Aenys's part, especially given the animosity between the Hand, Bloodraven, and House Blackfire. But given there were few claimants, and none with an outright firm claim, some historians have suggested now may have been the time for House Blackfire to attempt a more peaceful claim to the throne. Nevertheless, Bloodraven responded to the letter by offering Aenys a safe conduct, promising no harm would come to him so that Aenys might come to King's Landing and present his claim in person. Unwisely, Aenys Blackfire accepted Bloodraven's olive branch. Yet hardly had he entered through the gates of King's Landing, had a contingent of gold cloaks and raven's teeth seized hold of him and dragged him in fetters to the Red Keep, where his head was promptly struck off 
and presented the law to the Great Council as a warning to any of those who might still have Blackfire sympathies. While of course, most of the lords present resented House Blackfire, with many losing sons, brothers and fathers fighting the Black Dragon, there was a sense of unease at the underhandedness and dishonourable way in which Bloodraven went about the killing. House Blackfire would remain in exile in Tyrosh until the year 236 AC, during the reign of King Egon V. The eldest son of Hagon I Blackfire, Daemon III Blackfire, had been crowned by Aegor Rivers known as Bitterstill following Hagon's death during the end of the Third Blackfire Rebellion. In 233 AC, after Aenys Blackfire was killed, as he tried to make his claim to the Great Council in King's Landing by Brendan Rivers, it only served to fuel the enmity of the exiles in Essos and make it harden instead of lessen. As a six year cruel winter ended, Damon III decided to make the crossing. He led his forces across the narrow sea with Aegor Rivers and the Golden Company at his back and landed at Massey's Hook. Damon III's hope was that winning a small few victories would encourage more lords to rally to his side. In truth, the Blackfire cause was already starting to fade. To most Westerosi lords, the Blackfire's host seemed an army of foreigners holding tattered old banners of a failed usurper who had died 40 years ago. The hoped for swell of support never happened, and the invasion never spread far beyond the initial landing point in the Stormlands. King Egon V and his three sons, Prince Duncan, Jaehaerys and Daron, rode out themselves to face the rebels. The rebellion soon ended at the Battle of the Wentwater Bridge, where the Blackfire army was defeated, and Sir Duncan the Tall of the Kingsguard slew Daemon III. Aegor Rivers escaped once more, fleeing back to Essos to once again try and breathe life back into the Blackfire cause. Almost more importantly for the future of Westeros, Sir Theon Lannister, the second son and heir of Lord Gerald Lannister, died at Wentwater Bridge, making his younger brother, Titus Lannister, the father of the legendary Tywin Lannister, the new heir to Casterly Rock. Aegor Rivers eventually emerged in the disputed lands a few years after the rebellion, fighting with his sellswords in a skirmish between Tyrosh and Myr. Despite Aegor's death a few years after the fourth Blackfire rebellion, the Blackfire cause would still linger and persist. Despite not being named the fifth Blackfire rebellion, the War of the Ninepenny Kings was the last attempt by House Blackfire to take the Iron Throne. Late during the reign of King Aegon V Targaryen in the year 258 AC, News reached King's Landing that the so-called Band of Nine, a group of ambitious power seekers in Essos, had come together under the Tree of Crowns, where they had vowed to aid one another in carving out kingdoms for each individual member, and among them was Maelys the First Blackfire, better known as Maelys the Monstrous, the last of the Blackfire pretenders who had won the command of the Golden Company by killing his cousin Daemon a few years before. His desired kingdom, as Daemon I Blackfire's last descendant, was the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. When he was told of the events, Prince Duncan Targaryen famously quipped, the crowns were being sold nine a penny, and afterwards the Band of Nine became known to the Seven Kingdoms as the Nine Penny Kings. Most men, including King Aegon V and later King Jaehaerys II Targaryen, thought that the threat posed by these pretenders would be countered by the might of the free cities, or otherwise founder in Essos. Nonetheless, preparations were made to make sure the Blackfires could not land on Westerosi soil. The Band of Nine's goals met with initial success, conquering the disputed lands and securing the free city of Tyrosh, setting up one of the Nine Penny Kings as ruler. Second, they conquered the Stepstones, and from there they stood ready to threaten the Seven Kingdoms. King Jaehaerys II Targaryen, who succeeded his father upon the Iron Throne in 259 AC, recognised the threat the Band of Nine posed and sent a large force to the Stepstones, bringing the war to the Band of Nine rather than waiting for an attack. The king wished to personally take command of his forces, but was persuaded otherwise by his hand, Lord Ormond Baratheon. Lord Ormond took command of the Targaryen army instead. The task force included a fleet of 100 longships sent by Quillian Greyjoy, Lord of the Iron Islands, and a force of a thousand knights and ten thousand men at arms sent by Lord Titus Lannister from the Westerlands, under the leadership of his brother Sir Jason. House Martell too sent spears from Dawn, and lords from every kingdom from the icy north to the sands of Dawn joined the Targaryens on the march to the Stepstones. 
This bringing together of lords from across the realm has been attributed as the start of the forging of the bonds between houses that would later spill over into Robert's rebellion. When the Targaryen host landed upon the Stepstones in 260 AC, the fighting began in earnest on land and at sea, and lasted for the better part of a year. Lord Ormond was one of the first casualties of the war, dying in the arms of his young son Sir Stephen Baratheon. Command then passed to Gerald Hightower, Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. After Sir Jason Lannister was killed on Bloodstone, Lord Roger Rain led the remaining Westermen to several victories. Many young knights and lords distinguished themselves in the battle, including Stephen Baratheon, Brendan Tully, Tywin Lannister, and his brother Kevin, and of course, Aerys Targaryen, the heir to the Iron Throne. The great uncle of Lord William Dustin also participated in the war, as did the Marybrand brothers. Goodwin's friend, a promising young champion, was also slain in the war. In the end, it was the young Barristan Selmy who cut a bloody path through the Golden Company's ranks to slay Maelys the Monstrous in single combat, thereby ending the threat to the Seven Kingdoms once and for all. The Black Fires were extinguished, at least in the male line, thanks to Sir Barristan Selmy. When the next opening presented itself, Barristan was named in the Kingsguard, an opening he accepted despite being heir to Harvest Hall and being betrothed. Thus ended House Blackfire in 260 AC, as the Blackfire pretenders were now consigned to the pages of history. But that may not be the case. It is possible members of the House still exist through the female line or via illegitimate children, and while we cannot say for sure or with any sense of certainty, it is possible that maybe one day another of the line of Damon the First Blackfire might try and make a claim on the Iron Throne.